Hi everyone, welcome back to the C Morning Show. We're almost at the halfway point of our program and it's time for us to get into our first discussion of the day and contributing to education here in Indonesia can be done in many different ways and setting up libraries can become one of them. And our guest this morning is no stranger to the program. She is a woman who has been doing exactly that in the eastern part of the country all the way back since 2009. Now, currently, she has set up over 200 libraries spread across 19 islands dubbed Rainbow Reading Garden or in Bahasa Indonesia, Taman Baca and Pelangi. And now let's say hello and good morning to Nila Tanzil, who is currently undergoing his studies in Perth, Australia. Hi, Mbak Nila. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Hi. Carol and Paul. How are you? Very Hi. great. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, all the way from down under, you know, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> but of course, like Paul had mentioned, you are no stranger, especially right here in the Sea Morning Show. But please do tell us, especially for those um, uh, viewers that is just tuning in right now, now how that you've been devoted, especially in you know establishing libraries, free libraries across Indonesia now, uh, for more than 2009 you started 19, so about 12, 13 years, yes. Mm -hmm. 13 years, yeah. Thank you for having me, Paul and Carol. Okay, so um, why did I decide to set up school libraries? Um, across islands in Eastern yes. Indonesia uh, through Rainbow Reading Gardens. It's because um, back in 2009, I traveled uh, to Eastern Indonesia, to Flores, and then I decided to take a consultancy work there. And then uh, when I stayed in Labuan Bajo, I walked around to small villages and I saw the disparity in education um, yeah. in those small areas. So um, I went to schools, I visited primary schools and then I saw, um, oh my God, they didn't have libraries and no bookstores, of course. So yeah. it reminded me of my childhood where like I always read books after school. Mm -hmm. So like looking at these kids never had the experience of the joy of reading, it yeah. broke my heart. So I thought maybe I could do something. So that's why I decided to set up Taman Bacaan Pelangi or Rainbow Reading Garden, setting up school libraries in those remote areas. So this couldn't have been easy. As we know, uh, reading has become more and more difficult for kids these days. Not only do they not have access for it, but kids are more drawn to things like gadgets. So. In regards to your foundation and getting started with providing libraries, libraries need books. How do you provide them yeah. with books? How do you get your hands on them and uh, provide them to those that need it? Well, the first libraries that I set up, I used my own savings and I wow. bought all the books from the bookstores <laughs> in Jakarta and then flew all the way back to Flores, brought all the books, of course, with excess baggage on <laughs> the airplanes. Uh, but that's okay. I guess that's the risk um, yeah. that I had to take because I really wanted to help these kids. I, I really believe that reading would change mm -hmm. the way they see life and uh, through books, books could inspire them to mm -hmm. be able to dream big. Mm -hmm. And having a big dream is really crucial. Yeah. You know, Manila, I think when I was a little bit younger or when, you know, our parents was younger, there's uh, this library library, or known as Perpustakaan Keliling. So usually wow. they're like in a little, yeah. I don't know, I guess a bicycle. My mom would tell me they have that, you know, coming around about. So how about the kids or I mean, how is the climate there in Eastern Indonesia? Please do enlighten us. You know, you were saying it's very difficult to find, you know, uh, bookstores and whatnot. Is the children actually, you know, wanting to read books and whatnot? Like, are they used to it? They're accustomed to it? Are they eager to read books? Yeah, so from our experience in Rainbow Reading Gardens, every time we set up new libraries in any areas mm -hmm. in eastern part of Indonesia, the first time they saw all the books, like the kids' eyes light up, Aww. like it really sparkled, yeah. and they rushed to the bookshelves. Oh, like it was, it's really heartwarming, and mm -hmm. that is why I keep doing what I'm doing right now with yeah. my team members. It's because like the enthusiasm of the kids whenever they saw the books, it's like really big. So I really believe that these kids actually they would love. Right. reading books if there is access to it. Right. So that's why Rainbow Reading Garden is providing access to books uh, to those 
who live in remote areas, mm. yeah, in especially fact, in the eastern part of Indonesia. We're seeing images of some of those kids right now. You yeah. can fake those smiles. Yes. So happy. And I do believe that I'm sure yeah. your kids are the same. Kids are, I don't know if it's in their DNA or it's just from a very young age, kids are automatically drawn to books already. Right. That's why there's yes. such a habit as to yeah. reading your children's mm -hmm. stories and things yeah. like that. And since 2009, yes. when you started your very first library, you have now set up over 200 libraries in East and okay. Western, Nusa Tenggara, yeah. Maluku as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. what sort of support? I mean, now you did the, you opened the first one yourself. You literally had to fly mm -hmm. books that you bought. But what sort of other support have you gotten over the years uh, in these remote areas in order for you to be able to provide these reading opportunities for children? Right. So after after the first four libraries, uh, then people started to join in, like to contribute, mm -hmm. and then now um, we have like registered Yayasan or uh, yeah, NGO, nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. where um, we got funding from corporate social responsibilities, like from corporations. Um, and also we, we collaborated with the local government, for example, in Nagekyo district in Flores. Yes. They, the local government started to chip in in building these libraries as well together with us. So that is one of the ways to make this Nonprofit organization sustainable yeah. and our program sustainable. Yeah, so not only Rainbow Reading Gardens build libraries in the schools, we also provide training for teachers. So these wow. teachers and school principals know how to manage the libraries that we already set up in right. their schools. And also, like Paul mentioned, right, like parents read to their kids, mm -hmm. it is also important. So we provide training, we teach the parents how can you read books to kids so the books come to life, you know, right. like the stories become lives and make right. the kids in love with the book so that's some of our programs yeah it's like you become a storyteller i love how you made this into like an ecosystem Daniela. and as you're right not yeah. only the children reading the books but you know the teachers education even the parents itself need to educate themselves how to read books not to just sure. let the kids read the books alone and whatnot um in regards to this i just want to ask you throughout the journey um we know can you tell us the first time that you made the uh, Rainbow Garden uh, Library itself. How many books that were installed in the library? Until now, you have more than 200 libraries across the eastern part of Indonesia. If you remember that first library where you, you, know, you took out your money from your own savings to bring those books there and whatnot, how many books were there in that one particular library? And how many books there are now across those 200 libraries, Manila? Right, so initially, like in the beginning, in the first library, I remember I flew back to Jakarta and I bought 200 books. At that time, uh, I remember I paid 5 million rupiah uh, <laughs> to buy all the books from 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 a bookstore yeah. um, with 30% discount, Yay! so I was like very happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I told them I'm going to set up a small library oh, in nice. a remote village in Flores and they gave me 30% discount, yay! Uh, so now in every library that Rainbow Reading Garden set up, we mm -hmm. have um, a minimum of 1,250 children's books, all children's wow. books. There's no school textbooks because right. I believe that kids would love to read yes. when they read storybooks, yeah. right? right? Yeah. So. In, the, in our libraries, all the books are storybooks. And now we have provided more than 287,000 of children's oh. storybooks for more than 42,000 of kids wow. in those remote areas. That um, is especially amazing. In it just come out from Banila's love and passion sure. of, you know, spreading love and look where it's the domino effect to where it is right now. Sure. And, uh, you know, obviously I mentioned Amazing. earlier that, you know, kids have things like gadgets these days. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a bit challenging yeah. because you're seeing less and less of a trend from, and it, this is not just in remote areas of Indonesia. In fact, it's happening in, even in our, our capital city and the larger cities across Indonesia. So I, I find it as a challenge for schools mm -hmm. to continue to implement for kids to have a good habit of reading mm -hmm. and to have a good habit of uh, yeah. having books. Yeah. Um, this is becoming a challenge, but what other challenges apart from the one that I mentioned do you face 
in uh, trying to spread literacy amongst uh, young children? Yeah, I think the mindset is one thing. Um, um, most of the teachers, when they think of reading, um, they would automatically think that, oh, reading means studying. Mm -hmm. So this kids have to read, study like textbooks. Right, it's mandatory. So the first time they saw, yeah, so the first time they saw, oh, why why the books are all storybooks? Where's the, the school textbook? So we have to slowly change their mindset mm -hmm. and instill, you know, like the concept of reading for pleasure, uh, right. which didn't exist before. Sure. So we have yeah. to, you know, like slowly change their mindset of this and also to parents yeah because right. like um most of the parents also think oh they have to study 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 like what is this reading storybooks so we have to introduce to them that reading storybooks could you know like enhance their imagination and right. also uh, improve their reading skills actually mm -hmm. right. yeah yeah and i, th I yeah. know i know so that that's for, one of the biggest challenge yeah i have a i have a seven-year-old at home you have a young ones at home and her school encourages her to bring home books from the library and yes. none of them have anything to do with education yeah. some are comic books some right. are just yeah. little story short yeah. story books and i think that is a good way to build yeah. this kind of habit because right. not everything has to be short form content on the internet yes. or a tv show yes you know, they can learn yeah. it those ways. exactly yeah. and with my kids they um they can borrow the books from the library and they have to put it in their daily journal to oh, kind of really? like reread and rewrite what you think about the book uh, itself. So they have to show they understand. Yes. Now, again, that is good. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Manila. We know that you've achieved a lot, especially through Rainbow Reading Gardens. Now, this uh, definitely would shape a better future generation for Indonesia because of Rainbow Reading Gardens. But how? What's your hope, though, for the future generation and the youngins now in Indonesia through Rainbow Reading Gardens? Okay, so my dream is um, that all the kids in Indonesia have reading habit, love to read books, and have the access to good and high quality of storybooks. Um, because I believe that, you know, like all the children in Indonesia have the same rights, you know, yeah. like have the same rights to have like good quality of education and that includes access to books so um, yeah I want all the kids to have good access to books and love to read yeah oh, that's my that. dream real simple but yeah. a wonderful dream yes. and you certainly are helping them achieve it thank you so much Vanila it's been great to catch up with you again yeah thank you Paul thank you Carol thank you C today for having me and good luck with your studies Vanila can't wait to have you back home <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's still four years down the road because PhD oh, takes I'm sure a long time. You'll breeze right through it. Good luck for you and Taman Bacaan Pulangi. Take care. Thank you. You have a great All one, Vanilla. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing Thank what you do. Vanilla is very inspiring. Yeah. I mean, if, if we can have more of Vanilla, yeah. like you know how Indonesia would become. Yeah, uh, it's not just it's not just kids, Sorry, by the way. Me. I know there's been a, there's been a fly following me around all morning. <laughs> so it's not just Vanilla. I noticed that um, I mentioned I shared it with the Sea Morning Show where I myself have fallen back in love with books recently, yes. albeit electronic books at first because mm -hmm. I'm always carrying a gadget around. Mm -hmm. But it is a hard habit to like. I remember when I was a kid, I used to read. Right. What happened to that? Like, why did I stop reading? I have no mm -hmm. idea. So starting to Life build comes. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Life happens. But starting that habit again of every time I sit down, yeah. instead of opening social media, instead of opening a streaming service, remembering that, oh, yeah, I left off that mm -hmm. book that I was reading in that chapter. Right. It, it has to be reinstilled again. And I'm glad that uh, people like Vanilla is instilling that in our young children and yes. children across Indonesia so that they don't have to reintroduce that habit like right me. make it like a habit for them right mm -hmm. all right all right what a wonderful conversation we've had but we do have to take a short break for now let me try to take care of that fly yes and, uh, we will return with more including some updates from around the world when we return here on that sea morning show stay with us i, thought, right. I thought that was a bee <laughs>